When you hear talks of the South Side, you hear talk of the team. See, niggas fair Prince, but respected Prim. For all you slow motherfuckers, I am breaking it down illa. See, Prim was the businessman and Prince was the killer. The Supreme team had two separate ways of conducting business, Supreme way and Prince way. You heard of names like Supreme, Prince, Righteous, Baby Wise, and Green Eye Born. And the younger dudes that saved the Supreme team, Bimmy and Black Just. When I first entered into South Jamaica, Queens, Er Gotti, let alone Ja Rule, was non-existent. A lot of people didn't understand that Supreme and his team would be up. One minute, they was millionaire status. Buying home, foreign cars, Mercedes Benz, jewelry, and Jeep for the team. He even had a cab stand where he only used luxury Lincoln Town car. But my fellow round table brother, Supreme, had a terrible vice. He was in love with cocaine and was getting high like crazy, causing him to lose all his fortune. And every time he went down to the ground, Fat Cat was always there to lend him a helping hand, to help him get back on his feet, not Er Gotti or Ja Rule. Supreme was a great visionary. In 1987, when he caught his first federal case, and Prince was tied up with his own legal issue. Preem turned to the future, Bimmy and Black Just, two young and eager brothers that was hungry and ready to carry the torch and keep the Supreme Team cash flow alive and well. With their popularity and ability to build and network with the like of Fritz, AZ, Alpo, Rich Porter, Demencio, they was able to reinvent the wheel and quote unquote save the Supreme Team. Supreme Way, for the most part, have always been business minded and political correct, doing everything within reason to keep the team and those that are affiliated with the team happy, making sure everyone was making a decent livelihood and they was protected from all harm and evil. The team loved this man and the security that they provided and the procedure and equipment that was in place, unbelievable. I can recall during one incident, a large gathering, I believe at one of those sniff basketball tournaments, when the top dog was betting $100,000 per game, winner take all. As soon as gunfire erupted, members of the Supreme team knocked Supreme down to the ground and they jumped on top of him to shield him for any bullets hitting him as if they was the secret service protecting the United States president. Prince Wade, it was only one way with Gerald Miller. If it wasn't rough, it wasn't right. Prince's biggest problem, he did not fear anything, especially problem. Prince considered himself the professional problem solver, and he was great at solving problems for the most part. Any problem that came his way when he was in his rightful state of mind, but most of the time, he was not in a good place mentally, which led to many situations that ended up in a bloodbath. Prince was indeed more of a blue collar criminal who would have embraced Curtis Jackson, AK 50 Cent, with open arm because they shared the same street DNA and mentality and brute force behavior. Whereas Supreme is more of a white collar criminal who only get his hand dirty when it's absolutely necessary, when he feel his back is totally against the wall, which made it easier for him to be more receptive to Er Gotti and Ja Rule opposed to 50 Cent. When I speak about events in my life, the purpose is to get our younger generation to understand the mere fact the things that are going on in today's society is history repeating itself. My objective is to speak to those that are at risk in efforts to prevent them from traveling down that road of darkness, to help those that are willing to listen and take heed to get their life together before it's entirely too late. Please use my story as the blueprint of what you should not do with your life by paying attention and taking note will help my children, your children, our children to avoid a violent death at an early age, life imprisonment or time lost from your loved ones that you will not be able to get back. 
I grew up in a time when the theft of my childhood was stolen by Brian Glaze Gibb. That selfish bastard stole my youth. When I should have been playing with my G.I. Joes, a rock and sock and robot, or studying for school, Glaze had me sneaking out the house, going to Disco Fever, the zoo, the cellar, Skate City, Eclipse, Empire, and Utica Avenue Skating Ring. The purpose was to go there to have a good time, drinking, dancing, and socializing but you could have left there in a body bag instead. I'm not here to offend anyone. I apologize to anyone who have suffered or lost a loved one due to my past action and behavior. Brian Glaze Gibbs, crime doesn't pay. If I can change, then anyone can change. Order your copy of the audio book, Straight From The Street, Volume 1 and Volume 2. Also, follow me on Instagram at Brian Glaze Gibbs.